Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another special edition of the show. I'm here with Marta Delfa. Yay! Yes! <laughs> anyway, um, she's with Torres, and uh, so we're still at the, the Wines from Spain event here. And um, we're going to talk about her, we're going to talk about the winery, and we're going to show off some Padron skills. And I'll talk about that, and um, I should start that too, because that way I know how much time I did. And uh, so, Martha, so thank you for spending some time with me and uh, kind of introduce yourself and yeah. how you got here, yeah. So, well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity, and I would like to thank also the people from Wines from Spain for yes. always doing these amazing events. They, you have to come, they are always the best wine events, fun, informal. Super cool. And yeah, as you say, my name is Marta Delfa. I work for Torres since uh, September 2007. I start very young, of course, as you can notice. Yes. 11 <laughs> years ago. And uh, yeah, I'm in charge of the brand of uh, Miguel Torres, Familia Torres, um, especially for the high-end wines, the single vineyard wines, and as well as the Jean Leon Winery, mm -hmm. which is a winery that belongs to Torres since 1994. Okay. And how did you get into wine? What, 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 what was the, how did you get into what you do and what made you want to pursue this? So actually, I guess it was destiny because um, I definitely didn't have a wine background 12 years ago. Um, but I'm from the region, I'm from Panades, where Torres is located. So I grow, I grow up like surrounded with the vineyards. Okay. And um, I studied German philology. So I could speak English, um, Spanish, Catalan and German. And I, I was actually looking for a job for the weekends, and they were looking for guys that could speak languages. So I started there. My first contract was for two months. And I guess I did something good because <laughs> 11 years later, here I am, nice. still representing them and very proud of it. Nice. So next time I go to Provine, I need you to hang out with me. Oh, yeah. No, actually, they all speak English there, so yes. that was good. The Germans, they yeah, they, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was a great, I did go to Provine, so it was a great time there. Um, so let's talk about Torres and kind of the history of the winery and uh, kind of tell me a little more about what they do. So Torres is a family-owned business. Uh, we are on the fifth generation and it started first in 1870 in Villafranca del Panades. So basically, um, the story of Torres, it's very related to the story of Catalonia and Spain in general. So they were farmers from the region, and the youngest son, uh, Jaime, decided to take an adventure. A lot of people back on the late 19th century were going to Central America and doing business there. And uh, that's what he did. So he took a boat, working in the boat um, that was going to Cuba was the way that he arrived in Cuba. And I started to work very hard there, save money, invested in the petrol and oil companies in New York, actually. And he got the rights of selling oil and petrol in all Central and South America. Okay. So it took him a few years to get rich, but he did it. So we had to follow him. Mm -hmm. And um, he came back to Spain and founded the winery together with his brother and his father, Miguel. And since then, the winery has been passing from generation to generation. Um, obviously, there was like better times. There was like some challenging times. Back in 1939, the winery got um, bombed. Okay. Um, and it absolutely destroyed. So that's the reason why nowadays we are based in Pax del Panades, which is like a few miles away from Villafranca, okay. where the original seller was. Torres was also the pioneer producing wines in Chile from Europe. So it was the first European winery being in Chile since 1979. And we have a huge project with the Fair Trade and Fair For Life wines there. We are the number one winery for Fair Trade and Fair For Wines, okay. um, for, for Life wines in uh, Chile. And as I was saying today, nowadays we are on the five generation and um, we are really proud. Uh, we are a big family, um, but, and we are a big winery, the most admired winery in the world for several years. But we have the soul of the farmer and mm -hmm. the soul of the small one. So we, everything we do, we put our heart on it. Okay. And about how many wines do you all do? 
Oh, we produce like different wines from different regions in Spain. That was actually an idea of the five generation. We wanted to represent the, the Spanish portfolio worldwide and we didn't have any Rioja wine, so that was a challenge. So we start, um, we start building small boutique wineries um, mm -hmm. inside of Spain, but outside of Catalonia where we were traditionally based. So we produce wines from Priorat, from Panades, from Conca de Barbara, Custes del Segre, Rioja, Ribera del Duero, Rueda, and Rías Baixas. And then we have that winery in Curicó, in a Central Valley in Chile. Okay. And we have also a small winery in uh, California, okay. in Sonoma. All right. Very nice. Um, so we're going to be featuring this wine here. So tell me about the uh, Jean Leon. Or I, I, spit, I said it wrong, didn't I? No, no, you said it perfectly, okay. Jean Leon. <laughs> okay. So Jean Leon is actually a winery that belongs to Torres since 1994. Um, Jean Leon has a really cool story, also again, very related to the story of Spain. So he was a young guy from Santander. His real name was Teferino Carrion. So definitely not Jean Leon. Yeah. He escaped from Spain uh, because of the dictatorship in Spain. Came to US as a stone away. So it took him like eight times and finally he made it. He arrived in New York, worked as a taxi driver and that's why the name of the brand is 3055. Yeah, let's, let's do a little quick. We'll get, uh, make sure that they can see that. Yeah, this is a cool story, so I didn't mean to interrupt, but yeah. <laughs> and that's why there is a little New York tax in the back. Yeah. So working as a taxi driver, he was also working as a bartender in the Rockefeller Center, met Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra employed him at the Villa Capri, the restaurant that he owned with Joy DiMaggio. Working there became the best friend of James Dean. I know it sounds unreal, but it's true, I promise. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Um, and they had the dream of opening the best restaurant in LA, in Hollywood together, so they opened La Scala restaurant. Jean Leon was the owner of La Scala, who still opened that restaurant. Mm -hmm. And he was obsessed with wines, so he wanted to produce French wines. And he picked up actually a land that is in Panades um, to produce those French wines. So he was actually the first one starting to produce Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc in Panades. And the first one bottling uh, monovarietal wines of those varieties in Spain back in 1963. So he became really good friends with Miguel Torres, the fourth generation uh, back in the 60s. And at the end of his life, um, they made the gentleman's agreement. And the agreement was that Torres will buy the seller under two conditions. Never change the style of the wines and never sell it as Torres. It will be always sell as Jean Leon. Okay. So it belongs to us. It's like our little pearl, but it's still Jean Leon. Okay. So uh, which, what, what is, which wine is this one? So this is the 3055 uh, Pinot Noir. It's 100% okay. Pinot Noir. Again, we wanted to keep the, the, the wheel of Jean Leon. So when we create the range of 3055, we follow the rule of never change the style of the wines. That's why we went for a, for a French grape variety that it's actually not very common in Panades. Mm -hmm. On top of that, it's uh, organic and vegan as well. And again, as you can see by the color, it's very following the French style from the Provence rosés and the French rosés. Okay. So here we don't do any maceration at all. All what we get in the color is from pressing the grapes. And that's it. Yeah. And it's absolutely delicious. Dry, bone dry. Yeah. Very refreshing and very good for the porron. Yeah. So um, so when I did the porron, we had the Chardonnay in there. So it's going to be a little bit different. But I had that and it's awesome wine. So let's let's show the porron. Am I saying it right? Yes. I think I am. So we'll show you what this is. So tell me, tell them. Well, I actually I'll probably need to know a little bit more. So what is the background of this thing? So porron, <laughs> you know, in Spain we have like different ways to drink wine and none of them, they are traditional. Um, in different regions in Spain, we have like different, I don't know how you will call it, like basils um, to drink the wine. This is the typical one in Catalonia. The idea is when the farmers went to the vineyards, went to the land, they had like dirty hands. And obviously they couldn't carry glasses with them. Probably most of them, they didn't even have glasses at home. They okay. had porrones. So the idea is this is a way to share the wine um, in the vineyards or in the land. So basically they were bringing that to the vines or to the vineyards and they were putting the wine here. And when it was like lunchtime or breakfast time, we always drink wine for breakfast in Spain, at least at that time. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> um, so you don't they, do mimosas? We, I never had a mimosa until I arrived to U.S. Imagine, I had porron all my life, but right? never a mimosa. But we can try with mimosa, yeah. it will be delicious. And basically the idea was like to pass the porron. It was a way to share the wine during breakfast or lunch without like having to 
make all the glasses dirty and yeah. having to carry too many things to the, okay. to the veneers. So it's a great way to share something that it's really good. It is. So, um, so my background with this, I've only done it twice. The first time I, I so the idea is you, you, you really extend as, as much as you can with this thing. And the first time I did, I didn't get very far. The second time, which is about three weeks ago, I got almost all the way, almost, almost. But um, it's, it's fun to do and uh, it's a cool thing. And um, so let's, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. You want to start? Sure. I sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start. I'll, I'll start. So um, there's nothing to explain. I'm just going to do it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. Good job. Got a little wet. Sorry if I got on the microphone, but yeah, she's probably going to be better than I am. Well, <laughs> I, have to, I have to say, I grew up with it, and I'm still, my dad steals the shame of me, of my skills with the porron. So sorry, dad. I love you. Please love me back, too. <laughs> She did they finished way better than I did. So now let's talk about the wine. So that was get the novelty done and that was fun and it was really good. So the wine, um, so definitely a Pinot Noir, you get a little bit of earthiness in it, you get um, some nice little bright red fruit on it. Um, it's not super acidic, but it's really bright and fresh. Um, it's really tasty. It's got a nice chill on it, so really, really refreshing. This is a really nice wine. Um, so yeah, I didn't want to like make it all about the Padron. I want to make it more about the wine, but it's, I didn't do the put on earlier. I saw that. I saw <laughs> yeah. someone doing that. Steven, I think, was doing it. Yeah, yeah, he's a professional. I saw him doing that. So Steven's another one of the people that's helping us out here today. Um, and uh, I was like, ooh, they got one. So, but, um, so yeah, so this particular wine, I uh, said it was Pinot Noir. I said it was also uh, organic and biodynamic? Um, or, or organic and vegan. Be vegan, okay, sorry. So, um, so, what makes it vegan for my viewers that may not understand what makes it vegan versus maybe other wines? Yeah. So in the process of wine, there is one moment that we need to clarify the wine in order because after the fermentation still have like some rest of the pulp or some rest of the skins or the yeast. So in order that it's like so shiny and so clean, we need to clarify the wines. Um, there is different agents that you might add to the wine in order to clarify it. And uh, one of those, my, well, two of those comes actually from, um, from materials that are not vegan. So they come from animal sources like the egg whites and the fish tail, mm -hmm. um, which is basically a gelatin produced by the bones of the fish. Um, the third component that you can use uh, to clarify wine is bentonite. And this is basically what we use normally in whites and roses when we want them to be vegan. It's an earth, it's a kind of a clay that has a different density. So by adding that to the wine, it takes out all the rest of right. pulp, etc., etc. Yeah. So one of the things um, in my in my non my non blogging life, which I forgot to mention, we don't mention where I work. Um, so, which I don't know if you know where I work yet. That's fine. We'll talk about it off camera. Um, but someone had talked about that they have they certain wines they get allergic reactions and i was talking about well you know some people are actually literally are allergic to specific grapes you know the proteins in the grapes mm -hmm. and then i said but then there's other things you know where they use you know is in glass which is what you're talking about the fish and then egg wise she goes i'm allergic to eggs i'm like well the filtration process doesn't take all the protein out so so if you get like hives if you get allergic reaction from wines it might be because you were allergic to one of those two products um, that they that are used for fining, and mm -hmm. that might be what it is. It's probably not the sulfites. Matter of fact, I guarantee it's not the sulfites. Sorry, I'm not going to get in the soapbox on that one. But um, so that's one of the things about. So, um, is there a way to know? Not always. It's not always put on the bottle. Sometimes it is. But that's how a wine can be vegan. Is they don't use that. So if you didn't know what made a wine vegan and what made it not vegan, that's what it is. Um, this is an awesome wine. I like it a lot. Thank yeah. you. Um, so is there anything else you want to talk about about the winery or about you or about the wine or growing up in Spain or anything? Well, <laughs> the only thing I would like to say is that we are located south of Barcelona, 35 mm -hmm. miles south. So Barcelona is an amazing city. It's 
uh, very popular nowadays. It's actually one of the top destinations for USA. Yeah. And if you ever want to visit us, we will definitely welcome you with our open hands, full glasses and full bottles. And we definitely expect you to come visit Torres and to come visit Jan Leon. It will be a great time, I promise. Awesome. Well, uh, Marta, thank you so much uh, for spending some time with me um, and, and hanging out with me, doing some some parona, parona. Um I can speak Spanish. I'm not the best at it. But... After a couple of parones, it'll get better. The rolling of the R's gets much better. Okay, parron. I don't, I don't really roll my R's as much as I probably should. Um, anyway, uh, so thank you so much for uh, hanging out with me. Uh, so, folks, that's going to do it for today. Uh, you click the links above to friend me up. I'll have links below for the winery. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's going to be it. We'll see everyone again next time.